<laughs> Good morning. Thanks for joining us here on AM860 and FM 95.1 KWPC. I'm Jordan Davis, and this is Moving Forward. With me in the studio this morning is Maggie Curry, Janina Hawley, and Nancy McGill. How are you, ladies? Very good, thank you. Excellent. Well, we're really excited to have you in here this morning, and we want to talk a little bit about some of the events that you've got going on. Sesquicentennial is coming up. Uh, there's a time capsule, so we'll start with some of the events that are right now. Okay, Jordan, we have a Farkle tournament tomorrow night at the church, and it's at uh, 5.30 p.m. There's going to be a meal. There's still some spaces open if anyone's interested. It's $15 entry fee, but there is a deadline of noon today. You could call Pat Boozer, 319-321-0123, and she'd be more than happy to take your reservation. It's going to be a lot of fun. We plan on having 40 45 people there, and like I say, there'll be a meal and then also some uh, prizes, too. Then next week we have a St. Patrick's Day feast, and this is going to also be down at the Island Church at 2598 Stewart Road. They're going to be serving corned beef and cabbage, Irish beef stew, and there'll be a lot of Irish laughter. And then also it's $15 a person, and you can RSVP by tomorrow at 5 to Pastor Sandra, 563-599-6708. And all the proceeds from these two fundraisers will go to help with the sesquicentennial. Okay, so those are all those are both fundraisers to help put on that, that event that's going right. on. Gotcha. Well let's talk a little bit about the Sesquicentennial. So it's hundred and fifty years. That's what Sesquicentennial means. That's right. right. Uh, so it's the hundred and fiftieth anniversary of was it the building of the church, the founding of the church? I'm gonna let Janina go on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, eighteen sixty eight is when they actually built the church. Okay. Uh, the people had been holding church services before that in area schools and some in homes. And uh, the trust, they've got uh, seven or eight men together as uh, our original trustees, and they decided it was time to build a building. Gotcha. So it, it went up in June or July of 1868, and that's why we're celebrating 150 years. That's really exciting. So. 150 years as a church, and there's probably been there's probably been like many churches ups and downs, and so where are you guys at right now with congregation size and pretty pretty good pretty good size? I guess I don't know the size of your church. Yeah, we are up to we have a 175 uh, wow. registered members, and most Sundays we have 70 or 80 in attendance. Very cool. Sometimes more. So uh, yeah, we're doing great. That's excellent. Well, that's really cool. It's always nice to see good church families coming together to celebrate their own history. So that's very exciting. Now, um, Time Capsule was also getting open. Now, it's going to be revealed in June during the event. Can you tell us a little bit about it without revealing too much before it actually gets shown shown around? We uh, married a Time Capsule back in 93 at the 125th. Okay. And uh, several members of the Sunday school classes, and we put in some history items of what was going on at that time. Um, at our last uh, meeting, we went ahead and opened the time capsule so we would know what was in it. And uh, on the day of the celebration, we'll open it up for everyone else and show them what's inside and put that stuff on display. And then uh, we'll add some more items for 2018 and put it back where it was. And maybe it'll be open on the 175th anniversary? Well, Ideally. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. So, what are some of the things? Now, I, I understand you're going to wait to reveal, but so it's stuff like pieces of history that would be things that were important, so maybe newspaper clippings from the time. So, uh, and that you said it was 1993, correct? Mm -hmm. 1993. So, I mean, I was born in 1995, so I couldn't really tell you what was going on before <laughs> then. But, uh, I, but each of the Sunday school classes um, put something in. They had a list of who's in their class at that time. Uh, told a little bit about what they were studying, and okay. uh, one class <laughs> had to put in a uh, an empty bottle of Mountain Dew because <laughs> they said that's what they do in class. They have to have their Mountain Dew with them. So <laughs> there were fun funny. items. There was uh, a lot of history items, um, newspaper clippings from the celebration. So. That's really cool, and that's that's it's nice to see. And my church also opened their uh, their time capsule not too long ago, and it was very exciting, very cool thing to see. I unfortunately didn't get to be there. I was still at school, but I remember them uh, talking about it. And we I've seen some of the items that were that were out there. So that's really cool. So kind of the importance of what we what we could say the importance of these time capsules is is to capture that moment in history 
so that when you come back 25 years later and you can look back and say, wow, look at how much it's changed mm -hmm. since then. And that's really cool. I, I, I find that kind of enjoyable. I've got my own I've got my own time capsule that I filled when I was maybe uh, seven or eight that I'm waiting a few more years to open. That's it's it's just it's a neat thing. It's a very neat thing to be able to do. One thing I saw when we had opened it briefly was um, a note that Nancy had written 25 years ago. And it's just amazing. You know, she talked about a pop bottle and stuff. So it's uh, it's very interesting. Those years go by so fast. And it was fun to read those things. That's really cool. So mm -hmm. now, is there anything else going on that you'd really like to like to tell us about? So when when is the event? We haven't even gone over when the event is. <laughs> June sixteenth and June seventeenth, at four o'clock. There's going to be an ice cream social Ooh. on Saturday the sixteenth. Then six o'clock. There's going to be music, and these are uh, a Christian band. It's Devin McDonald and Friends, and uh, they really go for the youth, uh, and it's, it's wonderful music. And then June seventeenth at eight o'clock, a meet and greet. And then 10 o'clock will be our worship service. Noon is lunch in the fellowship hall. And then 2 o'clock we'll have a celebration service. And then 4 o'clock we're going to have dedication of an outdoor sanctuary. And I don't want to take all this over or anything. I want the ladies to talk too because they have just as much knowledge on some of this stuff. We uh, are going, we have 28 members of our church who have been members 50 years or more. So we are preparing a, uh, a, a part of this celebration to recognize all of them. Um, we have member, I think the oldest member has been there for 72 years. Wow. So we've got quite a few. So we're going to have certificates for them and, and honor them. Just coming back that want to share with us. Uh, we will have the conference bishop, uh, Laurie Haller, will be there to give the uh, sermon in the morning. And our district superintendent is Lillian Segrin from Mount Pleasant. She'll be there. So uh, we want to make sure that everybody gets to reconnect with old pastors and uh, and former members and have a good time. And that's re that's really neat because it's it's a lot of the it's a lot of some of the older generation coming in with the newer generation of mm -hmm. the church and getting the chance to see and hear from some of the folks that were there before. So maybe some of the younger folks in the congregation might get the chance, or maybe just newer members will get the chance to uh, meet some, what the the people that have been shaping the church that they're a part of mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. That's a really that's a really interesting way to share some of the history of the church. So and that sounds like really fun filled and a lot of activities going on. All, almost a whole day of Sunday of yeah. of uh, enter er, entertainment and church service and. That sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. I'd like to mention too that Saturday night the concert is a contemporary Christian concert, so we're okay. hoping that that brings in a lot of young people from the area. And contemporary music now, uh, my my church, my, I go to the First Baptist Church of Lido in in, uh, in Alito, and my um, we have a eight o'clock service and a ten o'clock a ten o'clock service. So our eight o'clock is our more traditional, but then our ten o'clock is our uh, more contemporary. And I love both. I love I love both styles of the music, but. Uh, uh, contemporary music is very good, especially for stuff like this, just because they get to, they can connect, like you said, with the youth. So, and uh, that's that's important to be bringing youth in for uh, youth into church. So, uh, we're really we're really excited. I can't wait for this to come up, and we might we might have you in again sometime a little closer to June, so we can talk a little bit more about uh, the event as it gets as it gets coming right around the corner. So, we're excited about that. Is there anything else you ladies like to really touch on this morning? I would, yeah, we've only been there uh, members for five years, my husband and I, and these ladies have been there for ever, a long time. <laughs> and I guess I'd like to, maybe if Nancy wants to tell the different missions that we do, it's Ooh, just unbelievable absolutely. all the different things that this small church does. And one thing, she's choir director also, and one thing I'd like to say is it's such a great feeling to stand there and listen to the singing each Sunday and it's just like the walls are blowing back and forth. It's, it's wonderful. I really enjoy that. So, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear about some of the mission work that you've done. Um, our church is um, blessed to have all of the missions that we do. Um, several years ago, uh, we started a clothing closet and so we have free clothes. Uh, it's open once a month and um, we also have a food pantry and for that, because we belong to a food bank, you do have to live in the L&M School District. Um, however, both of these missions have been going on for more than five years now. And when we started both of them, 
um, because we're so small, we said, oh gosh, will this go? Will we still have clothes? Will we still get food? And we are still going this many years later with those missions. Um, we do a lot of other things. We have, um, our theory sort of is, if you have a passion, go ahead and do it and others will come with you. We have uh, people that knit and crochet and so we do lap robes and we do prayer shawls for people. They are, anyone can have one either for celebration or for illness. Um, we support the Ronald McDonald House. Um, we just try to support all of the Methodist missions that they have also. Um, we do blankets, etc., for Blanket Sunday. So I think for a small church, we have been really fortunate to be able to do as many missions as we do and continue them. It just seems like um, it doesn't matter what mission we're doing, we always have volunteers. And um, last week we had a group that um, goes out at least once a year, if not twice a year, and they um, rebuild where there has been, like this time it was flooding, so they were outside of St. Louis and they spent a week there. And we had nine people on that team from our church that worked all week. And those people, along with several other people from our church, have also been working here in Muscatine on uh, an apartment building that I think is going to be used by MCSA. And Maggie could probably explain a little bit about that, but they are rebuilding, so people have homes here in Muscatine also. We'd certainly love to hear about that, but I wanted to ask one question about the clothing closet. So, uh, the food pantry, obviously, those are donated Those are donated goods. Is the clothing, clothing closet the same way? Can people donate clothes? People donate um, gently used clothes to us or new clothes to us, and we also have a couple of businesses that um, if they have extra clothes at the end of a season, they donate to us also. Excellent. So We, we have a uh, rather large, which you call a sea tainer, in the parking lot of our church, and it is full of clothes. So, so yeah. is, is that how people can drop them off? I'm just trying to I'm yes. trying to let everybody um, know if they have clothes that they. The group mm -hmm. get they get together. At, it's at the Fruitland Post Office. Is where they hold the clothing closet. They are sorting clothes every Tuesday morning, so you can take them in on Tuesday morning. Uh, the sea tainer, I think, is unlocked most of the time, so you could just put them in the sea tainer. Or you can put them at the front of the church, and we'll get them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, excellent. Now you were going to mention the MCSA was doing. Right, I'm formerly worked at MCSA, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some pro had some projects going. And what it is, they have uh, remodeled a home, and it's like five apartments. And what they do is, folks that are living at MCSA, as they grow and learn their new skills and things, and they're ready to go out into the public or into the community, sometimes they're not quite the uh, confidence and things so they can live in one of these apartments they still pay rent and things and then also um, they still get the support of MCSA staff so if they're okay. not quite sure about something you know so it's, it's a stepping stone mm -hmm. it's a great stepping stone so uh, yeah it's absolutely wonderful and there's a need definitely a need that's incredible mm -hmm. well and you know we've had we've had MCSA comes in on a pretty regular basis yeah. to speak with us we love we love to hear from them hear about the great things they're, they're doing and we're really glad to have you in this morning to tell us about some of the great things that Island United is doing as well so thank you ladies so much for joining us thank this you this has been thank now one, one more time let's mention when when the event is when the sesquicentennial I said that right didn't I sesquicentennial you say it better than anybody I know <laughs> Saturday June 16th it starts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Ice Cream Social and then the music. And then Sunday, June 17th, starts at 8 a.m. Uh, with the meet and greet. And then you can contact anybody at the church and they'll give you the information. And we plan to get it out all over so people can see it and stuff. So. Well, we're, we're looking forward to it. I hope all goes well up until that point. hope the fundraisers go well as, uh, as well. A reminder that you can get registered for the Forkville fundraiser by noon today, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Noon today. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Once again, Maggie Curry, Janine Hawley, and Nancy McGill from Island United Methodist joining me in the studios today for more Moving Forward. So thanks again for joining us. This thank has been you. Moving thank forward. you so much. On AM 860 and FM 95.1 KWPC.